What's going on everybody? Matthew Monas here and this is the Dell G3. This is Dell's budget gaming laptop. Starts at $850 to get you gaming. Maybe you work at McDonald's. You don't have enough money to buy that expensive Alienware laptop or Razer Blade. Well, I love what Dell's doing with their affordable gaming line. They're not making it look like your typical black and red laptops. This is a nice departure. This is the gray and blue version. It's clean. There's nothing obtrusive bothering you on the top of the lid. The only thing that's there is the Dell logo in the middle and the G3 icon on the back of the laptop. Now this is made out of all plastic as expected. This is a budget gaming laptop, but it feels well constructed. The only concerns that I have is there's slight screen flex, but it's nothing too crazy. This is thinner than most gaming laptops in its category, so this weighs around 5.15 pounds, and it's thinner than the Lenovo Y530. Now the port situation is kind of interesting, and I think you guys are gonna figure out why in a second. Because on the left-hand side, you have a barrel connector, which by the way is a 130 watt power supply, which is pretty thick. I wish they would make it a little bit cleaner, kind of like the one that's being used on the HP Pavilion gaming laptop. You have an HDMI port, a full-size RJ45 or Ethernet jack, two USB 3.0 ports, and your audio jack. On the right-hand side, you have another USB port and a full-size SD card slot. The only thing that's missing is USB Type-C. Now I understand this is a budget laptop, but come on, this isn't 2017. USB Type-C, whether it's Thunderbolt 3 or not, should definitely be on this laptop. Opening it up is super easy, and once you're in, everything is pretty much upgradable, except for the CPU and GPU. The 2.5 inch hard drive is 5400 RPMs, and you get your typical read and write speeds. The M2 SSD gets your standard read and write speeds for an SSD drive. RAM is both swappable, upgradable to 32 gigabytes. You have a 52 watt hour battery on the bottom, which gets you pretty good battery life. I was getting around five and a half hours of general use before needing to charge. Now, now there's two fans, you have two heat pipes running across the middle. I do like the fact that the CPU and GPU is on either side of the fan, making it slightly better for cooling. The display, 15 inches, and I'll be honest with you, it's not the best display. Color accuracy is not the greatest. Brightness is not even on the category average, around 217 nits of brightness. So you definitely don't wanna be near a window. The darker, the better the area it is in terms of gaming. Contrast levels are also not that great. It's not a very punchy screen. Like I said, this is a budget laptop, so you're not gonna get the best production. So just above the display, we have your 720p potato canvas, surrounded by big, thick bezels. It looks like this, it's nothing special, just like every other gaming laptop. What is it with laptop manufacturers and bad webcams? I think for the next Halloween, I'm gonna go out as a 720p web camera from a laptop, because I personally think I'll have the scariest costume. Sound! Coming out of two speakers on the bottom of the device. They definitely face downwards, they're very tinny, it is clear though, doesn't distort at max volume, but it's obviously it's not the best sounding speakers. Keyboard, it is full size, which means you have a numeric keypad so you can crunch those numbers. Travel distance is not the greatest, 1.2 millimeters, which is much too short for a gaming laptop. I would have loved at least 1.5, it would have gave better tactile feedback when you're poning some nudes in Diablo. Do people still play Diablo? I don't think they do. Touchpad, good size. Lots of space to move your fingers around. Windows Precision Driver, so very accurate, great to use. Obviously not as good as a glass touchpad, but pretty good for a gaming laptop. So let's talk performance. You can buy this in a variety of different configurations, either with a 1050 Ti, or you can spec it all the way up to an i9 with a 1060 Max-Q. My review unit is the 8750H with the 1050 Ti version, and it does provide great performance. As long as you're gaming between medium to sometimes high settings, you're gonna get great frame rates in most games. I tested this with Overwatch, I played Fortnite, I played PUBG, and it's all capable with this laptop. Now, the big question is, how does it handle when it's under load? How is the heat management? Well, surface temperatures were pretty much in line with the majority of gaming laptops. Anywhere from 48 to 50 degrees Celsius, I didn't feel like my fingers were getting hot to the touch, so that's great news, especially if you're gaming for long periods of use. The second thing, how are the CPU temps? Do they get too hot? Now look, every gaming laptop I've tested this year, 
thermal throttles a little bit or it gets a little bit hot. This one actually did a pretty good job. Sometimes it will thermal throttle, but most of the time the turbo boosts stay well over three gigahertz, giving you the most performance. Now, if it does get too crazy, I've never once encountered this laptop drop below 2.2, which is the base clock speed. So overall, good job with the thermals. In terms of noise, it is a loud laptop. Like when this thing is on idle, you're around 42 to 43 decibels. This is noticeable, especially if you're a student, especially if you're in class, maybe someone sitting beside you, they're definitely gonna hear the fans. When this thing is gaming, the decibels ramp up to about 52 to 55 decibels, which pretty much puts it in line with the majority of laptops or gaming laptops that are currently on the market. So here's the bottom line. The Dell G3 is a decent budget gaming laptop. The price is good, the design is good. I love the minimalistic look to it but it falls short in a few areas. The keyboard, the travel distance is much too short for a gaming laptop. It needs to be thicker so you can feel the keys. Secondly, it should have a USB type C port. This is 2018 and it's pretty standard on the majority of laptops. And the last thing, the display. It is very dull compared to the competition at this price point. So all in all, it's not a bad budget gaming laptop, but I do think there's better options out there. If you like this video, smash the like button. If you have any questions, hit me up on on Discord, I'd be happy to answer them. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes. And I'll see you guys in the next video.